Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. Today I'm actually going to be collaborating with some other homeschool moms. We're all going to be discussing various things that have worked for us throughout our past homeschool year. Um, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to try to make this short and sweet. It got up into the 90s outside here today, and as we speak, it's 86 degrees in my house because we have not put our air conditioning in yet, which means that it is extremely hot here, and I've got a room full of kids right next to us who are having a hard time being quiet. So I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible. What I'm going to be talking about today are just some of the things that have really worked well for us this year that are new. Now I have talked about some of my favorite curriculum in some of my other videos that I'll link at the bottom. Um, and if you know anything about me, you know that I really, if I find something that works for us, I stick to it. I'm not one who uses new curriculum every year. For example, we've been using CONUS for a really long time. We've been using Five in a Row for a long time. Um, Liberty Mathematics, Life of Fred, those are all things that we've been using for a while, have really done well for us, and we've stuck with them. But what I'm going to be talking to you about today are things that are new in our homeschool this year and that we have really liked because we've tried several new things this year. Some of them were okay, but these are the ones that I really, really enjoyed and that really worked well for us. So in no particular order, first I'm going to start with the Everything You Need to Ace books. And if you look here, there's a whole series of them. There's Science, World History. English and Language Arts, American History, and Math. And for most of these books, I don't use them as curriculum per se. What I do is I keep them as resources in case we need them as a reference. For example, when, we, when the kids were doing a unit study on Earth, we went to the science book and there was a really nice diagram of the Earth's layers in there that the kids were able to copy for one of their notebooking pages. So what I found in these is that they're, they're written in a really interesting way, in a really easy to read way, and it's colorful. You know, it's really something that the kids don't mind looking at. And if, again, if you've watched my other videos and if you have read my blog at all, you know that I really love notebooking. And if you look at these, they're actually called in one big fat notebook. That's part of their name in one big fat notebook. So they are really like notebooks inside. Um, colorful, beautiful pages written in just a really easy to read format. And they're a really great resource. And, and actually what I like at the end, at the end of each chapter, there are actually 10 review questions. Now, like I said, we're not using it as, for example, a textbook, but that is really something, being the nerd that I am, I can see myself definitely reading through these books at some point. The only thing that I don't like about them is when we were doing our Viking unit earlier this year, actually not too long ago, they didn't have anything about Vikings in these books, at least not that I saw, and I was really upset about that. But other than that, they're really great. The only one that we actually do use more as a textbook is the math one because my 15 year old daughter, she had been doing Life of Fred Algebra and she got to the point where she really felt like she needed a review of some concepts like decimals and per percentages and things like that. So what she did was she actually picked things up with this book. She took a, br a break from Life of Fred and she's been doing this. She just reads through it. It gives you some really easy examples and um, there's 10 questions at the end of, of each chapter. And it's, it's a snap, really, to finish it. And it's a great review for anyone who needs it. Um, and also, they're only like between $12 and $15, I think, on Amazon. And I will link to these at the bottom, too. All of the resources that I talk about today, I will link in the description box. But these are really great. So I, I recommend that you get these as a reference. Another thing that we really like this year was Cuckoo Clock Secrets. This is actually a book and it's written by Karen Collette and it, it's about a, a family who finds uh, a coin in their grandfather's grandfather clock. Isn't that funny? No, grandfather's cuckoo clock, not his grandfather clock. Anyway, they find this mysterious coin in it and from looking at the back of it, they realize that it's from Switzerland and coincidentally, the father ends up having to travel to Switzerland for his job, so he takes the whole family and they decide to figure out what the whole 
mystery is of this coin and why it was in the cuckoo clock. And accompanying this, I got, it's called um, Case of Adventure Destination Switzerland Unit Study. It's an online unit study that you can purchase. And like I said, I will link that at the bottom. It is amazing. This unit study is one of the most comprehensive unit studies I have ever seen in my life because you know that I love unit studies. Um, my, my CONUS unit study book is like this thick, so I love it. And what is really different about this one is that not only are there tons and tons of activities for you to do that have to do with this book, but this website that, that you can actually go on in order to get it, they have links to videos to watch it that are all about Switzerland. I mean tons of videos. The unit study has so many, so I can't even talk again, so many printables, so many. And I'm going to admit that when I first got this unit study and looked at it, I was overwhelmed completely because I am a relaxed homeschooler. I like to keep things as simple as possible. So I will say that when I looked at all of the activities, like on my laptop in front of me that go with each chapter, I was like, how am I going to do all of this? But after a while, I realized that you don't have to do all of it. And I say that all the time. I don't know why I was thinking with this one that, that you had to do all of it. So what I did was I picked out the activities and the printables that I really thought would work the best with my kids. And at the end, we were able to make a beautiful lap book. Well, each of the kids who, who used this did. And by the way, I did use this with my four, fourth, fifth, and seventh grader. Um, it could, I could have used it with my younger kids too, but I, I group my kids. I don't do all of them at one time because it's too overwhelming. So I did not use it with my younger kids, but it definitely can be used with an, a younger child. But anyway, so here is the lap book that we did. And this is the cover. And this is just a sampling of all the printables. There are so many more than this. Um, so right here we have a map of Europe. And let's see, we talked about John Calvin. There's a little cuckoo clock. There's the coin that was found in the cuckoo clock. Um, lots of mini books included. Lots of them. Um, this is all about Switzerland, and the kids had to write different things about the different areas of Switzerland because the terrain of Switzerland is, there, there's so many different, um, how can I put it, weather and landscaping that you see there. There's mountains and there's warmer weather, so what they did was they described each area there. And then here we have, yeah, it, there's, it's big. So I'll just do this one. This is just another mini book that we did. These are the languages of Switzerland. Um, in Switzerland, there are lots of languages that are spoken. I think it's, um, let's see, French, German, Italian, and Romanche. So what this does, I don't even know if I said Romanche right, by the way. That's just how I say it. So what this does is it just gives you certain um, sayings that you, can, that you can say in each language. And there's a car beeping outside of my house. I live on a busy street, and people here are loud. Anyway, so it gives you different greetings that you can say in each language, which was really nice. They, they colored the flag of Switzerland, and there's a little map of Switzerland, um, and just all these different things, different kinds of food in Switzerland. And I'm not going to go over everything, but as you can see, the printables are so colorful, and there's so much to do. Oh, and this was my kid's favorite thing, the clue cards. Do you remember the clue cards? Yes. My daughter is sitting there, and she's like, yes. She loved these clue cards. And what they did, I think it was almost every day. Now, this isn't even all of them. Some of them, I think, fell out somewhere in our tote. But um, what they would do is they would have their own little, um, it would tell you how to, to solve the, the, the puzzle. And they would just figure it out every day. And it was, it was usually something different. Like sometimes they would have something that they had to spin and line up the, the number and letter. And other times they would just do like the numbers and the alphabet. And anyway, my kids really love doing these codes. And the cool thing now is that I just found out that they are coming out with their Destination Scotland unit study this summer. So I'm really hoping to get my hands on it because I love Scotland. So we'll see about that. Okay, so another thing that we really like, not curriculum per se, but we always start our homeschool day with a devotion. 
And I have always found, now, now the devotions, I do do the seven youngest kids all together for the devotions. And I've always had a hard time finding a devotional that I really liked. This one is awesome because it has every, every few pages, there is a Bible reading. Let me see if I can find one that actually goes with it. There's a Bible reading and it will tell you a verse to read. It will give you related verses. And then it tells you some questions to ask the kids. And it, it's a really great conversation starter for your devotion time. Another thing that I really like is that it is translated into, it's called New International Reader's Version. This is written in a conversational language. It is true to the Bible's original meaning, but they write it in such a way that it is actually easy to understand it. Um, another great resource that we had this year, and that we're actually reading this now, The Dragon of the Month Club. This is our current read aloud. I read it before I actually read it to the kids. And this book is awesome. I really recommend that you get this book for your kids because it is such a great gateway to get your kids to want to read classic books because there are so, I, I don't want to tell you the storyline in it because that would give things away. But I just want to tell you that it really ties in so many different classic books. The, um, the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes is in here and old um, German fairy tales and what else is there dune if you remember the book dune things from that are tied into this and this is a really great way to get your kids to want to read these classic books so i love this and i really hope to get the second book when it comes out it is it's going to be a series i believe and the last thing that i'm going to talk to you about today are is my beautiful feet curriculum I have always wanted to use Beautiful Feet because it's a literature-based curriculum, and I I love living books. I think that they are just the best way to get your kids to learn. So when I had the opportunity to, to try out the Beautiful Feet curriculum, it's early American history, and again, I'm using this with my 4th, 5th, and 7th graders. We love it. What it does is it just it tells you what to read. There are a lot of books that go with it. So far, we've gotten through the Vikings and Columbus. And it tells you different questions that you can ask. There are maps that you can download for the kids to trace and label. There are videos for you to look at. And what I've actually been doing, um, it, it, it encourages you to have your kids write the things down because the questions afterwards are all about narration because this is um, a curriculum that's based on the Charlotte Mason method. So the, the questions afterward are really to encourage narration. So what I usually do, um, is I have the kids do a notebooking page after the, we are done reading the chapter for the day, unless we do mapping. If we do mapping, that's the only page that I have them do that day. For example, here they did Greenland, and then they colored a Viking ship. But otherwise, what I usually did was I would write on the board, I would ask them, okay, what do you want me to write on the board? And they would ask me to write certain things for them to remember about what we read, you know, about keywords or words that they want to um, know how to spell or if they want me to write out a complete sentence so they don't forget what their notebooking page is about. So if you look, then what they do is they make their own notebooking page. So we did this for the Vikings and we also did it for, we're still working through Christopher Columbus, but here's, we just did the map the other day for Christopher Columbus. And this is what we've done for Christopher Columbus so far. And another great thing is that they also do include vocabulary words. So there is actually a glossary for, for each book, book section too. So Beautiful Feet is also another thing that I would really, this is the perfect thing for a relaxed homeschool, really, because it's such a natural, laid back way for your kids to learn really meaty stuff. So that's all that I'm going to share with you today. I would love if you would leave um, a comment and let me know of any great finds that you found this year because I'm always on the lookout for some new stuff. And I will link all of the resources that I showed you here today. And I will also link to the playlist of the collaboration that I'm involved in today. So I hope you have a great day.